Hey everyone, so in the next 15 minutes or so, I'm about to break down for you how I earned over 800 bucks with an ebook within 30 days, and that was the exact same amount that I was making from a low entry barrier membership that I had um, when I launched it. So basically what I'm saying is that I swapped out time for automation and leveraged money, okay? And so let's go ahead and hop into it. So. Back in December, I launched a digital product membership, um, and I'm going to walk you through the phases of um, the four launch phases, okay? So first, I'm going to give you an overview of the launch phases, then I'm going to break down what I did for the digital product launch, um, the program, and then I'm going to shift over, and I'm going to tell you what I actually did to convert um, some of those same clients into um, an actual downloadable ebook. And so back in December, I launched a program called Digital Side Hustle Club. Now, the purpose of me even naming it that is that I have been a person where I've had multiple streams of income. I have called them, and I still do call them at times, side hustles, but it doesn't mean that I treat them like a piece of trash, right? <laughs> so some people, when they see side hustle, or they hear side hustle, their subconscious mind automatically assumes that you don't have to do no work and then they don't put in the work and that is part of the problem. So I'll get to that in a moment. So the four launch phases are as follows. Phase one is called like the teaser launch. It's also called the pre-pre-launch. If you wanna learn more about launches, make sure to click this book um, by Jeff Walker called Launch and it breaks it down. So first stage is pre-pre-launch. The goal of a pre-pre-launch is to let people know that something is coming. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I, for that particular digital product and the ebook, I did not do a pre-pre-launch because I was already talking about uh, digital products, the power of digital products, all year long, okay? So if you are new to this area um, or any a new arena, you do wanna do a pre-pre-launch and start providing some uh, content, value, education around that particular topic, but I had already done that, okay? So um, now let's go into the second phase. The, the second phase is the uh, pre-launch. So just take off the word another pre. So pre-pre-launch, and then this one is called pre-launch. So pre-launch could be you opening up a wait list. It could be you directing traffic to um, somebody to sign up for a webinar so that then in the third phase, you can launch whatever you have on the back end of a webinar or whatnot. Um, and again, because I was talking about this topic, honestly, for the last five years, for the, these two products, I did not do a pre-launch either, okay? <laughs> so, um, I don't, I'm not saying that you jump in the way that I did, but you really have to look at your, the context of your content. So the pre-launch could would have been, if I would have set it up, let me go backward. The way I would have set it up is the pre-pre-launch would have been, hey y'all, something is dropping on December 15th, stay tuned, something like that. Hey y'all, y'all been asking me how I created digital products as a mental health provider. Let's just say if I'm talking to therapists, um, make sure that you save the date. Like that's pre-pre-launch, right? Pre-launch could be, they see a thumbnail of a workshop that I'm gonna be hosting on YouTube. Um, and I may say it's two weeks from now. Go to this page and sign up so that you can be the first one to know what I'm dropping after the masterclass, right? That's the second phase. Another example of the second phase is to send out emails to my list and tell them, hey, I have this masterclass coming up. It's gonna help you um, do one, two, and three. Make sure that you attend because I got some big news. Again, we're just revving up the hype, okay? So y'all got that? Now, phase three is where you actually launch. And this is where some people jump in without having no context, no content, no value. And then they say, my product ain't selling, right? Or we have people who go through phase one and two and they stay there for so long. There's no particular time limit, but I mean, if you're trying to perfect your product, just put it out there and take messy action, okay? You can always fix it later, especially with digital products. What I have told my clients is, let's just say if you put out an ebook and you wanna expand it, right? And you wanna add some other things, probably because of the feedback that people have given you, then what you can do is just gift those people who already purchased it, unless it's more of a value too, like something completely different, and gift them the extended version. Like they will be very grateful, like, oh my God, you thought of me when you decided to extend your product. That's simple. So the third phase is called launch. So the purpose of a launch or phase three is exactly what it says. So you're gonna go out there, you're gonna launch your product. So you can launch your product in a multitude of ways. I am not gonna go over that in this video, but I'll give you some examples of what I did. So with the membership, I used YouTube intentionally, and I'll tell you this, cause I love to double dip. 
I use YouTube intentionally to get Google AdSense on the back end of my videos. Okay, keep. I made sure that I created content that will go beyond what I was offering. So education, value. And then of course I had a call to action. So for right before Christmas break, I was just doing masterclass after masterclass after masterclass. Um, I chose, even though Instagram is like more of a community for me, and that's really where I started my digital product journey, I chose to do YouTube because I can also share the screen, I can show them examples, I can do slides. I can't, I can do that on Instagram if I stream it from StreamYard, um, where you know, you can stream it to multiple places. However, it looks very tiny and they're unable to see the screen. So what I would do is I would set up my phone. This is all in phase three. I would set up my phone and I would just let Instagram know before I go live on YouTube, hey, I'm not gonna be looking at the screen. Um, I'll check in at the end to see if y'all got any questions, but I put like a pinned comment and said, and I set up mini chat automation, and I said, comment the word live, and I set it up on the back end where it would automatically redirect them to the actual live where they don't even have to look for it. They just click on the link, open up YouTube, watch the video with me. So that's what happened. So let's just say if I went live, five to six times, right? And all of my topics, this is really important. Anytime you have a masterclass, webinar, boot camp, or any type of launch mechanism, you want to make sure that everything that you're talking about up to this point matches. So it would not have been beneficial if I start talking about come to my digital product masterclass and then I'm sitting here talking about private practice. I'm sitting here talking about um, cash flow and money. Like those things don't match. And so I chose to honestly just share a story and talk about how my um, ebook, when I first started my digital product business, how it blew up also referrals in my business, how it helped me get speaking engagements, but ideally, you know, me serving the same clientele that I was serving, serving in my therapy practice. Those therapy clients helped me get an understanding of like what homework activities they like to do. They gave me feedback. I started crafting the book with one particular couple, and then I went to a, a boot camp for marketing and I um, end up deciding to make the book from that um, event. Now the book was originally physical and then I turned to ebook, knowing the power of scalability. So going back to phase three, with the digital product membership, we end up, we did a, we did a dollar intro and then it was $22 every single month, recurring revenue. Now with memberships, you have to keep in mind there's a back end for customer service. Um, you have to watch the payments. You have to remove people from the portal because it's like Netflix. If you don't pay, you don't keep it. And so we had about 63 people join within the first like two weeks before the new year. And I started this like December 15th or something like, I literally started it. I went to Disney Alani December, I think 15th or 16th or something like that. Like I went to Hawaii with my family. I was out there for seven days. I was promoting it while I was on the beach saying like, I'm, I'm having a master class, so I guess that's phase two. And when I got home, I actually started having a master classes. And I was having them like every other day, whenever I would feel like it, I would get up. And then I started making my content match. And so people started enrolling in the membership. Now, later down the line, because I was really in love with you know memberships, later down the line, I just realized that one, I and my team felt like the, the phrase side hustle was very indicative of potentially how these people were showing up. And I'm only saying this based off of what we saw. What we saw was a lack of engagement, no matter what we were trying to do to engage them. We were answering questions that came in. We were asking them what else did they want to learn. We would provide and slow down content. But what we kept getting was capacity, capacity, capacity. So I started telling people, and this isn't this isn't the first time this has happened. We started telling our community members that you know you want to make sure that your first stream is streaming because you will not have the mental capacity to give to a digital product. Even though digital products can be easy to put out there in the marketplace, it doesn't mean that it's easy to keep up with marketing while you're marketing something else. That's really key. So you don't want to just jump into a digital product launch and just feel like, oh, it's going to sell because this is what I do on a daily, you know? And so the membership clearly popped off and then phase four of a launch is called debriefing. Debriefing for me is like every single week in a membership. Um, and then if the membership runs for a long time, it goes into like once a month where we're really reviewing how is the performance of our clients? What wins are we seeing? Where are they getting stuck? How is the content in the portal doing? We had a private podcast so that you can learn on the go. But we put out all the bells and whistles and we primarily had about, no lie, like less than 10 people actually engage, whether it was in our Telegram group, 
um, or like on the coaching calls. And so it went from like 63 to an active maybe 54 people, which is still pretty good. And I was generating eight, let's just say $830. Let's just go there, $830. Some people got in when it was a $22 mark. Some people got in when it was $49. Because over time, after the beta launch, me testing out my digital product, we increased it. So by the fourth month, it definitely just engagement wise went down and I started to feel unaligned. So now I'm gonna integrate what happened with me replacing my income. So I had started back in February, March, I had started playing around with the idea of just, you know, let's just give all therapists and healers, so let's focus on that subset of individuals. Let's give them ideas around what can they create with a digital product attached to what they're already doing, right? Because I started to feel the sense of, I'm hitting capacity. And to me, capacity is self-created because you create your schedule, you decided to become an entrepreneur, but also, are you trying to create a whole nother business? Are you trying to create something for a whole nother, let's just say client avatar, right? Like ideal client, because if that's the case, then that also means that your brand is continuously switching to who you're talking to in terms of content. So I worked on it, put it down, worked on it, put it down. And then one day, Nothing triggered my spark. I was already in the process of shutting down this membership, but I told them whoever wants to continue to work with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and they just wanna get their digital product out there and launch it, just schedule uh, what's called an MVP session for the month of May, and we were doing a mental health awareness, 45-minute um, special for a ridiculously low price. It was like 25% lower than my regular rate, okay? So I am very premium. I am, I would say the Chanel, the Louis Vuitton of, my arena I it doesn't mean that I don't have lower products but typically the lower price products are more introductory and getting you to a place where you can take action when you do get into a coaching program with me right so it was 297 and my regular coaching rate for the same amount of time is a thousand dollars and up but it's because the ROI on the back end of having a business is a lot bigger than just learning information right and so some people did get on the calendar and I just blew their mind with what they learned in 45 minutes and they were like oh my god <laughs> right and I was like you know we talked about the membership and we got into like you know that's all I wanted was y'all to ask questions and we could have had these conversations honestly in a group where everybody's learning from each other but nevertheless I decided to one day you open up Canva I found a template I just typed in ebook template with pages and I just start plugging in my content I put so I I I typed out everything on Google Docs. I have, I'm, I'm listing out all my systems. I typed everything out on Google Docs. I use Grammarly as a Chrome extension, Grammarly, so that it can catch all of my typos, kind of thing. And something told me, take messy action. Don't send it to Fiverr for now. Um, your team can take a look at it later. It's Saturday night, put it out. Put it out there. So I transferred the Google Doc stuff. I, I, I do like designing stuff, so I will say like Canva is a great tool, especially if you don't have an eye for decoration. So um, what I end up doing is plugging all the information into Canva, putting a, some pictures in there, um, using some disclaimers, whatever, and then I put it up for sale. I did it the same way I did the Masterclass membership, it's just that I didn't have no Masterclass for it. I did mini chat so that I could automate the link to people's DM. It was a coupon code so that they can get $75 off for the first month and get this. I created one digital product based on what I was gonna share in the membership the following month before we shut it down. <laughs> and then at the end of the month, something told me to look at my revenue. And what ended up happening is I generated almost to the dollar the same amount that I did showing up live. Now, why is this a big deal to, to bring it all home, okay? It's just so you can understand the power of a digital product and scalability. When you create an ebook, you create it once and outside of making sure that it's get, it gets delivered to the people, um, you know, because there's no refunds on ebooks. Once you make the sale, you want feedback, but that's it, right? Now they're part of your community. You nurture them on your email list and all that kind of stuff. You put out, like I put out YouTube videos on the same topic so that they can go from the ebook to application or implementation. But outside of that, I'm done. 
for a membership, the goal is that you continue to enroll people in your membership. So all that stuff I did in December, I need to keep that up, even though I may slow it down just a little bit. I may do a masterclass, like a big one, and promote for it once a month, or I can say I'm only gonna have open enrollment for this membership once a year, every quarter, every month, you decide. Or it could be every day. It could be on Evergreen. Uh, mine was more Evergreen. And my team, so I gotta pay a team member to make sure that whoever is not paying, that they're removed. We have to make sure that our video editor edits my videos to put into Kajabi, and that we also put it on the public, I mean, the private podcast, so I hope that you can see that time goes into a coaching program, a membership, mentorship community. And we are spending more time and money than we are generating revenue. Now, somebody may say, well, just get more members. I understand that. But I want you to see the power of taking the same idea, but low-key like 1% of the whole membership and putting it out there for people to buy. Because what I had told my team is, now that I've went back, because I used to do this all the time, like digital downloads, now that I've gotten a taste of what it's like this year, game over, right? I am a clinical psychologist. I am a mother. I wear so many hats. And to me, I, I can integrate all of them because that that's who I am. And so some people like say, you know, I thought you were niche down to serve therapists. I am, but I'm also a clinical psychologist, which gives me street credibility to serve these therapists, right? So if I'm serving these therapists, these therapists and people that they know are also moms, they're wives, they're bonus moms, um, they are uh, travelers, right? Those are all things that make up who you see right now. And all of those are in benefit um, of the outcome of my business, right? So that's why if you go on my YouTube channel, you will see me talk about digital products, private practice, group practice. Um, I'll host live events, but then I'll also have behind the scene vlogs, day at Disney with my family. And I'm not trying to turn my page into like no Disney channel or no family blog channel, but you will see sprinkles of my life because I want people to see that you can have both. You don't have to choose. And I understand that the algorithm may say I should only focus on digital products or, you know, so they can push out my information and I understand that. But it ain't like I got family vlogs popping off like every day. I got way more education popping off every day every week or whatnot and so I just wanted to hop in here as I was driving I'm almost there um, to just recap the four launch phases pre pre launch is a teaser something is coming pre launch is you're getting people enrolled in the vision of something is coming you may even push them to a wait list um, or some type of webinar or masterclass or just something because you want to see the increase in, in interested buyers or investors Phase three is you actually launch the thing. That would have been me um, offering the membership or emailing my ebook. And then the fourth stage is called debriefing where you look at your numbers, you see how you performed, and then you make tweaks. Now, we'll close out with this. When something works out or doesn't work out, in stage four, you wanna make sure that when you go and launch the thing again, that you don't change too much. What do I mean by that? Um, if I know that a three-day masterclass series works for my audience, works for me with my alignment, with my personality, and it works with the outcome of the sales of my products and services, and let's just say I didn't get as many people signed up for a program or a membership or download an ebook or something, I should not go and change all of my sales emails, um, change my three-day bootcamp to a one-day webinar, um, change me speaking by myself to having guest speakers, um, how many social media posts. It's too many things because what's gonna happen is when you take a look back for the next launch, you're not going to know what contributed to the shift if something goes up or goes down. Does that make sense? So you wanna make small tweaks. So for example, I can say, okay, for the first one, I did nothing but mini chat automation and Instagram posts and emails. So I can make a small tweak and say, well, gosh, if we made $800 or so in 30 days, I wonder what would happen if I increased the content on YouTube. And I did go hard like back to back, but that was during holiday break. So it was also a different season. So what if I, if I had the bandwidth, what if I created two workshop type masterclasses on digital products and that my pitch is always my downloadable um, ebook, which is 60 digital, it's right here, 60 digital product ideas for therapists and healers to start their digital product journey, right? So if I made that a call to action 
let's just say every single Monday, because maybe I have other content I wanna talk about during the rest of the week. As long as I'm consistent, I will see an increase, right? Because also, based on the algorithm, if the platform that you know I put my stuff on starts to see that I'm talking about underlining outside of vlogs the exact same topic over and over again, digital products, digital products, but then I'm niching down what I'm talking about with digital products, it's going to start sending more people to my page. And what the beauty part is about digital products is again, I can speak to different parts of me and other people. So I can say, hey, do you want to um, learn how to take a vacation from your business? Um, and if you choose to like take your laptop, that's cool. But if you don't, let's talk about how you can set up your office so that you can leave. And the smart thing to do for me, now you can take this and run with it, right? And run with it is I choose to talk to the audience that I have the most captive attention of right now, which is mental health providers and healers. And healers can be coaches, holistic providers, teachers, anybody who serves people, right? Um, that's what I mean by healers. You're in the community healing other people, healing other people's mind, body, all those things, right? And so some people don't know how to remove themselves from the office to actually take time off from work. Even if they're gonna take their laptop, they may not still wanna be bothered. And so that's something else that I'm working on is like um, a vacation guide because if you go on my Instagram, and if you look at my vlogs, that's all I'm really talking about is the power of work-life integration. And you're like, what is this? And I'll make sure to link up the work-life integration video down below, um, but it's gonna give you some information about what it is, how it could help you move away from the shift of the mindset of balance, chasing balance, versus like, I got all these pieces going on in my life. How can they all fit together where I feel whole? Okay, so I'm gonna leave y'all with that. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know by commenting um, down in the description or comment section, um, what type of digital product do you want to offer? Um, do you have any questions about the digital product launches that I talked about? Did you like how I flipped a membership monthly recurring revenue into um, ebook sales where I just develop it once and I just sit back and watch sales come in. Let me know if this is your first time tapping into the channel. Welcome. Um, if you're coming back, welcome. Right. And uh, please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this and like the whole work life integration. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Bye.